Welcome to episode number four of the tutorial series. So we've already gone over a lot of modeling, but now I want to start talking about time savers. Like, you're good at modeling, you can get stuff done, but now how can you do it as fast as possible to save time and be efficient? So we're going to talk about some add-ons that you can use to save a ton of time when it comes to modeling. Let's go. So to start off, I'm going to be in a new Blender viewport, and we're just going to go ahead and click edit in the top left, and then go to preferences. Now I'm going to search for the landscape add-on, make sure that is enabled, and now the extra mesh add-on, make sure this one right here is enabled as well. And once you have both of those, you should be able to press shift A to add objects, hover over mesh, and now you should have a couple extras. You should have all these extras down here, and you should also have the landscape right here. I think we're going to start off with the landscape since I think it's the most useful. So just go ahead and click on it and you can see, holy crap, we already have something going on. Uh, click this left menu real quick in the bottom left. And so if you click on something else, the menu disappears and yeah, we want it just right off the bat. You can change subdivision level, the size of it on either axis. You can make it really wide. I mean, you can edit like every single setting you can think of. Change the noise type up, terrain, fractal, another noise. Let's see, distorted H terrain, slick rock. I mean, you can get so many cool patterns just from this setting right here. And we have the noise and we have another setting here. You can change things up. That's weird looking. Dang. You can also do like a different random seed if you just want a different variation of the settings you've already put in. You can change the size of the noise as well. If you want it to be like really, really distorted or just pretty flat, you can change the depth as well and the distortion. Oh, dang. That's weird looking. I want to try giving this a subsurf modifier just like this. Flatten it out a little bit. Yeah. And then shade it smooth. Oh, dang. We made this in like two seconds and it looks like all organic and crazy looking. And of course, the coolest thing about the landscape add-on is if you just press RX and 180 to rotate it upside down, we can scale it way up and we effectively have a canyon, just a big hole in the ground. So you can create mountains and canyons. You can of course also change the height of it. You can make it like plateau like this. You can also change the max and minimum height if you want it to be like really spiky like this. You can change the height of the edge. So you don't even have to flip it upside down. You can just do this and have a hole off the bat. You can even change the fall off if you want to have like a steep hill versus, you know, sort of a curvy looking hill. But yeah, landscape add-on, you can create some damn impressive stuff with it. I'd say this is probably the most useful add-on in the entire software because when it comes to like making game environments or just having giant landscapes you can sell to people, this add-on is the stuff. I can't even begin to tell you guys how much stuff you can make with it. Please go experiment with it. Try to make some cool stuff, try to sell it, as this add-on is <laughs> basically the future of 3D. Now let's go over some of those extra meshes. So if you go way down to the bottom, we really only need these two, diamonds and extras. Uh, diamonds, you get, uh, let's see, brilliant gems, regular old diamonds, and gems. There's a little bit you can change about this stuff, like the segments, oh, uh, the radius, height of the different parts of it. So yeah, you can change a few things, but unlike the landscape add-on, they're basically, like, you're not going to be able to change them that much. How they look is basically how they're always going to look. So if you ever need, like, a gemstone or just some sort of diamond-looking thing, these are really useful, but, but they obviously have a lot less use than the landscape add-on. It's just kind of cool that they're here. Next, under extras, we have a ton of stuff to go over. Let's start with the beam builder. Uh, this one is essentially just a way of building girders. You can choose the profile of it, uh, give it different letter shapes. I think uh, I looks pretty good. That's sort of the signature girder look. You can change the height of it as well, of course. The width, the depth, all those juicy dimensions. And you can even have it taper around the edges like this. So it's good for making girders, but obviously you saw there's a ton of different like profile shapes with it as well. So if you just experiment for a while, you could probably create some pretty sick look at stuff that don't even look like girders at all. Again, a very useful add-on. Next, we have the wall factory. This one is pretty insane. It essentially gives you a brick wall that you can modify to have doors, windows, all sorts of just weird looking stuff. You can give the window a bottom arch, you can add slots, you can add a horizontal slot, crenels, a shelf even. Where did that spawn in? Right over here. A backside, and even steps. Actual stairs. Yeah, you can change the position of the window as well, and it just modifies the brick to fit the entire thing, which is awesome. So one thing I like to do with this modifier is if you go into edit mode and select like everything, then you can right click, hit separate by loose parts like that. 
Now in object mode, with everything selected, you can press F3 and go to randomize transform. You can just search for it up here. And now change the Y location so that everything is slightly offset around the front like that. Now go back into edit mode, press A to select everything, change the scaling up here to individual origins, and then press S to scale everything up until it just slightly overlaps with each other like this. Now we can join everything together again. Now we can just go to modifiers and give it a bevel modifier up here. And this just makes it look more like bricks and a little bit less like cube-like, I guess. So just using this add-on, you can essentially create castles and buildings like out of thin air. I mean, you saw I only used a fraction of the features. Like this is only the crenels in the window, but they had like shelves and slots and stairs and stuff you can put on here. Another thing I want to show you guys is if you take this uh, opening right here, then you can actually make it like super tall and create like an opening in the wall. You can make a house in like three seconds with this add-on. Next up, the simple star, which there's actually not a whole lot to this one. It's just if you need a star shape for any type of mesh, this is just a fast way to get it. You can add a loop cut and like scale it out a little bit. I don't know, maybe bevel it once or twice if you want it to just look a little bit thicker, more rounded off. But yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do with this one. Next, we got the step pyramid. Uh, this one, I don't have any practical uses for, but it's still fun to play around with. Uh, you can play with the number of sides this thing has, the number of steps it has going up and down, the height of it, and even like the size of the steps. So you could end up adding a ton of steps like this, make it into some kind of vertical tower. So as I said, I don't know many practical uses for this one, but it is fun to play around with and you can create some really weird looking shapes with it. So I don't know if you guys come up with something cool, maybe just reply in the comments and show me what you made. Next up, we've got honeycomb. Uh, this one is again, pretty basic. Uh, you can create rows and columns of different diameters of honeycomb. Uh, most of the settings are pretty basic, but if you ever need like a honeycomb pattern for a mesh, then this is exactly the way to get it. Otherwise, you're going to spend like 20 minutes messing around with cylinders and array modifiers and just end up getting pissed off and not doing anything. So use this whenever you need honeycomb. Next, we have the teapot, which is actually kind of a weird one. If I click on it, uh, it just it just spawns in a teapot and you can change it to also be a teaspoon. If you ever need like a spoon for something in Blender, other than that, you can just change the resolution. But yeah, you can literally choose between a teapot and a teaspoon to mess around with. I've always wondered how this feature made it into Blender, but it's pretty cool. For teapots and spoons, use this. Now the last one is going to be this Menger sponge down here. This one's essentially a cube with a hole in it, but you can change the level to have even more or even less holes. It does get pretty laggy pretty fast though. I wouldn't go past four or you might crash your computer. Yeah, pretty basic shape. Uh, I kind of like the step pyramid. I just, I don't know what you could do with this, but it's still fun to play around with. And as far as I know, that's basically all the like free extra spawn in meshes and add-ons that Blender has apart from just the default primitives. I guess there's also like Taurus objects where you can spawn in like twisted Tauruses and knots and stuff like that. I don't really go over these that much though, because there's just not many uses for them. Like they look really cool for like the background of a render, but you can't really do much with them. But I don't know. Cool cool, but honestly, not that usable. Well, I hope you guys learned something from that. hope that makes it easier to like create models you can sell and save you guys a lot of time. But I'd say this above everything else so far in the tutorial series is something you have to experiment with. Even more than modifiers, even more than modeling, because the potential that these add-ons have to like save you time and still create some really high quality stuff is crazy. So go open a new Blender viewport, enable those add-ons, mess around with them, and just reply in the comments with what you can come up with. I'll see y'all later and stay tuned for episode 5 of the tutorial series coming out in a couple of days.